Evening. Plenty to look forward to in tonight's fifth gear. For starters, we'll be crashing this into this. And why are we going to do that? Well, I'll tell you in a few seconds. Other delights tonight are touring car star and guest presenter Jason Plato making mischief in the new Ferrari flagship for 612 Scalietti. While well, I'll be finding out what's fastest, Citroen C2 GT or Ford Sport Cup. And you can win the winner in our latest fifth gear competition. But first, here's something to think about. Over the years, crash testing has taken an astonishing variety of forms. Oof, I felt that. This next effort by Volvo is particularly inventive. But until seven years ago, most cars were only designed to cope with 30 miles an hour head on into a concrete block. If the steering wheel didn't move too much, the car passed. Today, crash testing laws are tougher, as are the cars, and the European crash testing outfit NCAP carries out even more challenging tests at an increased speed of 40 miles an hour, and sophisticated dummies measure the human damage in detail. The better a car does, the more stars it gets, with the maximum being five. And, as they say, safety saves lives. But it also sells cars. So manufacturers have a big incentive to produce stronger, safer motors. Fine, good, great. Well, it's fine, good, great if you've got a new car. But it might not be if you're in an older car, like these. The NCAP test started seven years ago, but most of the cars on our roads are older than that. A squashy car from, say, 1995 hitting another squashy car at 30 miles an hour might result in survivable injuries for both drivers. But what happens if that older car hits one of today's five-star rock-solid cars? Well, we've decided to find out. One deserted crash test area, one old car, one new car. Join us later to see two family wagons crash head-on. The result may surprise you. We've decided to find out what happens when an old car meets a new car. We want to find out what a top five-star safety rating means for the people in here. And the people in here. It's a simple test. It's a fascinating test. But it's never been done for television before. We've chosen Renault Espaces because the new one is the real school SWAT. Of all today's five-star cars, NCAP rate the Espace as the safest. In fact, they say it's the safest car they've ever tested. This typical nine-year-old Espace was a good performer in its day, and it's just the sort of thing you see full of families all the time. But exactly how much has the new car moved things on? Renault say it'll absorb two and a half times the energy of the old car, whilst the body shell has been stiffened to help withstand high-speed crashes. But if you're not careful, that extra rigidity can transmit increased forces to the next weakest link in the chain. The passengers. So it's vitally important to bring them to as graceful and as cushioned a halt as possible. Whilst the old car only had one airbag, the new one has eight, with the front two deploying at varying pressures depending upon the severity of the impact and the weight of the passengers. There are airbags running along both sides to protect the head, and in the first two rows, there are airbags at chest level. Drive off without a seat belt on. And an annoying bong drives you mad, which scores big points with NCAP. The cabin boasts even more clever features, like the seatbelt pre-tensioners. Five milliseconds after a crash, they take up the slack to prevent this happening. Then there's the reinforced rear seats to keep luggage at bay, close contact head restraints all round, and proper three-point seatbelts in the back. No nasty lap belts to chop you in half here. On paper, it's a state-of-the-art safety system, but how well will this goody two-shoes do in our real-world crash? To find out, we've come to the Motor Industry Research Association's Havoc area, a secret test site in the middle of nowhere used by the military and government. It has £200,000 worth of electric drum winch, a beast that boasts the power of 200 car engines. When we press fire, a network of cables will pull the two cars into one another at 35 miles an hour, guided by a high-tension wire. 
We're lining them up for the collision the NCAP test is designed to replicate. Driver's side to driver's side, just like a real-life head-on smash. In the cabin are a right pair of dummies. Meet Tiffy and Vic, our stunt stand-ins. Worth £100,000 each, they're wired up to record the G-forces on every part of their bodies. Time to make your predictions and place your bets. Do you still think they don't make them like they used to and the new car will tear like tissue? Or do you think the new car will demolish the old one? Perhaps you're sceptical and think that the five stars are just a marketing ploy and both cars will perform similarly. Well, don't blink and you won't miss it. To help make sense of the wreckage, we've recruited Crash Engineering Research Chief, Richard Morris. Now, Richard, I first have to say, I mean, this is your job, but to me, I'm always shocked by the amount of damage it's done. And this is just two cars at 35 miles an hour going head to head. I mean, this guy is just jammed in. We, there's no way we can get the door open or anything. No, I don't think in this particular test that there'll be any reasons to get the driver out, because I think he would be dead. We've had a catastrophic failure of the uh, occupant cabin. It's just to total overload there. And again, the sill, another major structural part, and that's all just completely disintegrated. The area where his feet were is now where the, where the wheel is. So, um, no, I don't think that would be survivable. But the, the, the torso seems to have gone out of the seat belt even. The seat belt hasn't held him. That's right. I think the seat has actually gone inboard, um, and that's why he's partly come out of the seat belt. And because the driver was lurching around, he wasn't in the airbag's line of fire, which meant it was rendered useless. So, a car that's only nine years old and yet a lot of damage. Indeed, yes, not Whereas good at all. Whereas the newer model looks at uh, first glances to have fared better. Let's see Certainly if we can has. open the door on this one. <laughs> no, that's still not going to budge. But looking inside, I mean, the driver's feet are, are still on the pedals. There's no intrusion of the steering wheel. But the airbag hasn't gone off. Sure, that's wrong. Well, it depends on how the car has, has determined the severity of the impact. If we look at the front of the car, if I, if I move these parts off here, you can see that the main structure here is still fairly intact. We've had a little bit of deformation up here. And that's a design crumple zone. It is, yes. You can see the, the features to, to allow it to crush there. So we believe that the car has decided that this was not a severe enough impact to fire the airbags. This high-speed footage shows how the red car comes to a much more abrupt stop, with the black car's wheels rolling for longer, indicating a gentler deceleration. All the newest spas felt it had to do to protect its occupants was fire the seatbelt pretensioners, evidenced by the cracked plastic at the anchor point and mild chafing on the belt itself. Presumably this damage wouldn't have been as bad if this car had hit a car of similar age. Yes, I believe that's true. This car has seen a lot of damage because it's hit a very, very stiff modern NCAP car. If it had hit a similar car to itself, there would have been less damage, less injuries, and perhaps the driver would have survived. So, I mean, it really is a, a classic double-edged sword. Yes, I believe it is. And until we see more cars which are highly Euro NCAP star rated, then we'll see this problem as they hit the older cars. Everybody in the newest bus would have walked away as might, this time, the passengers in the older Spass. But the data shows their driver would have taken the brunt of the force, up to 84G at the chest. That could mean massive internal hemorrhaging. The driver's legs would probably have been seriously fractured, with the thigh bones being pushed back through the buttocks. Blood loss would have been enormous, and with access to the lower legs being so restricted, the emergency services would have taken 30 to 40 minutes to extract him. Survival was highly unlikely, and remember all this at just 35 miles an hour. If that's got you concerned that you can't afford a safe car, then don't worry. A highly rated car in the right size for you may be cheaper than you think. 
five-star cars start at around £5,500 for a second-hand Renault Laguna. And there's a whole host of cheaper four-star cars that will stand a crash much better than that oh-so-tempting old banger you've got your eye on. The Euro NCAP website has all the ratings, and if you need any more motivation to go there, just remember this. Thank <laughs> you.